What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be finally revealing my $60,000 dividend growth portfolio. As you can see, it's currently at $63,088.21. And then if we go over to year to date, I started the year at $55,554.42. I've earned $1,096.97 in dividends. And my current market gain is $5,886.19 for a money-weighted return of 13.51%. And then I want to show you guys the all-time figures. So I actually started my portfolio on September 19th of 2019. So in a one month, it will have been five years since I've had this portfolio, since I started investing. And as you can see, my total dividends earned is $7,433.71. My total market gain is $8,293.98. Then my total money weighted return is 52.03%. So what I want to do with this video is I'm going to show you guys all of my stocks in these slices. I currently own 21 stocks. I've gone all the way from 10 stocks when I first started to up to the low 40s in stocks. And now I've narrowed it down to 21 stocks that I really like and that I think are going to be great for my future growth in my portfolio both in capital gains, but mostly in that dividend growth. I want to increase my dividend income. But before we go over my individual stocks, I want to show you my dividend growth chart. And I believe my fourth video I ever created shows you how you can create one of these you know, charts yourself. But if you look at 2019, I only received my first dividends, $5.78 in November of 2019. And then more dividends in December of 2019 for $25.02 total and a 12-month average of $2.09. However, in 2020, I earned $385.55 in dividends for a monthly average of $32.13. And then my dividend income really blew up in December 2021. I was able to invest a lot more money. I had $1,421.38 in dividend income or $118.45 a month on average. And then we go to 2022 where I broke $2,000 and almost hit $200 a month. I made $2,344.41 for a monthly average of $195.37. And I attribute most of this to owning those covered call ETFs such as QYLD, NUC, RYLD, and then JEPI. But going into 2023, I had sold a lot of those covered call ETFs in around the middle of the year or beginning of the year. That's how you can see my dividend income dropping. You see it was pretty consistent before the high 100s to the low 200s, high 100s, mid to low 200s. But you can see that my dividend income started varying drastically this year because I, I cut all those covered call ETFs, mostly because QYLD, NUC, and RYLD all decreased their dividend by about 18% on average between them. So that was really bad for my dividend income. They weren't growing their dividends, obviously, if they were cutting them. And so in 2023, I made $1,993.11 for a monthly average of $166.09. And then towards the end of 2023, I actually got rid of JEPI. And the main reason was because JEPI was another cover call ETF, even though it was one of the best. I cut, I cut that stock because they weren't growing their dividend. And in fact, they actually did cut their dividend by about $10. So it was around 30%. So I just, I just got rid of them, said, I'm just going to go 100% dividend growth stocks. And that's what you see with my portfolio today. I've been putting a lot of money into SCHD, which I'll show a little bit later. But currently, 
for 2024, I'm sitting at $1,229.22 for a monthly average of $102.44. And I actually think this year I can break $2,000 again, mainly because if we go to July 2024, I had a record-breaking month, $326.31, and I had received $194.81 from SCHD, which was their highest dividend that they ever uh, delivered to us. So I'm hoping in December of 2024, I get another monster dividend from SCHD of around that $190 to $200 range. That would put me in the 1400s, close to 1500. And then in December, if they have another $200 dividend, that would put me around the 600, 1700 range. And then I think the rest of the months would cover that and get me to that 2K. And then in 2025, that's where the dividend growth really starts coming in for my portfolio. But let's go back to M1 Finance. And let's start over with my individual stocks. So actually, first of all, how I break down my pies, my target for individual stocks is 20%. The actual, as you can see, is 50.9%. So it's going to take a while to lower that. I have SCHD, a target 70%, currently at 31.3%. So once again, it's going to take a while for SCHD to grow to where I want it to be, which is I really want the majority of my portfolio to be an ETF. And also with my 401k, it's 100% S&P 500. So I'm really just trying to make what I invest into majority ETFs. And honestly, SCHD is an amazing ETF. They give about 12 to 13% dividend growth. So that's why I'm excited to own it and see those dividends just increase rapidly every single year. And then finally, we have my real estate pie, which has a target of 10%. It's currently 17.7%. At one point, real estate made up 35% of my portfolio. So I dropped the real estate portion in half, and we'll talk about real estate later. But going over to my individual stocks, if we look, so... Unfortunately, I created the individual stocks pie, I believe earlier this year. So the all of the data for this pie is inaccurate. I've earned a lot more than $500 and 26 cents in dividends from my individual stocks. So unfortunately, M1 Finance uh, lost all the data, but I can just show you my stocks. I've got Costco, Avgo, Abby, Microsoft, ADP, Southern Company, American Waterworks, Lowe's, Texas Instrument, Waste Management, Home Depot, Duke, PepsiCo, Merck, Altria Group, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Abbott Labs, and then Hormel Foods. So tell me out of all those stocks, which ones you own, which ones you like the most, which ones you think that I probably shouldn't own. I think overall, my individual stock pie is pretty solid. If I had to point out just any stocks out of these that maybe I may, probably shouldn't own, it might be Hormel and maybe Abbott Labs. And I'll show you later on why that would be the case. But let's go back and check out SCHD. We actually have $19,782 just in this one ETF. And they're saying year to date I've earned $336.29, which is pretty good. Let's look at the all time for SCHD. So I only started investing in SCHD in June, well, the end of May of 2022. So I've only had them for about two years, a little over two years. I've earned $926 and 26 cents in dividends. So almost one seventh of my total dividend and income. And I mean, that's pretty much it for SCHD. I own 241 shares. Not much else to say about it. 
And then real estate, I have three real estate stocks, which the only realty income and FRT are the only stocks that I've held the longest out of my REITs. I've gone through a ton of real estate stocks and I think it's just best if I own as little real estate, as little REITs as possible, just because of how volatile they are. At one point, I owned a REIT, I think it was more like a mortgage REIT called NRZ, and they cut their dividend by 50%. And I've actually, I owned another mortgage REIT, BXMT. I sold them before they cut their dividend. And so a lot of times with these REITs, they just out of nowhere, they just start cutting their dividend. I had another REIT that I really liked. It was called Good, literally G-O-O-D. They ended up cutting their dividend 10 to 20%. But I've had a lot of success with Realty Income and FRT. And then Vici Properties is my newest pickup. And they look really promising. I just received my first dividend from Vici. It was $42. So that was awesome. They've got a high dividend yield of 5.26%. And I want to say they have good dividend growth. You can see I have 101.41 shares. And so, I mean, this is my real estate pie. I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. 50% realty income, 30% Vici, 20% FRT. And with that being said, let's go into my holdings where I will show you guys, you know, all right, it says I own 23 positions. I thought I owned 21. But either way, I'm going to show you guys my top performing stocks and my lowest performing stocks. So we're going to go based off of unrealized gain. And as you can see, AbV is my number one stock. So I guess I should preface this by saying these unrealized gains they could be based on any time period. Unfortunately, this doesn't tell you when I first bought the stock. Maybe if I clicked it, it would. No, it just says my average price and my cost basis. So for example, I know I've owned Microsoft the entire time I've had my portfolio. So I've had Microsoft about four years and 11 months. It's my third top performing stock at it has an unrealized gain of 89.3%, which is a great gain. And I've never sold my Microsoft stock either. But going back to AbbVie, the number one stock, they're up 106.94% since I bought them. They're also giving me a really great dividend and around 10% dividend growth every year. So that's nice to have with your top performing stock. Avgo is my number two top performing stock. This is one of my newer stocks. I bought this company right before they blew up. And I'm currently up 102.96%. And I want to say they increased their dividend by 14% the most recent time. So this is another stock that has grown a lot, but has that amazing dividend growth. So we already went over Microsoft. And then let's go over Costco, which is one of my favorite stocks. And honestly, I only have 3.9 shares. I wish I had a lot more because Costco also gave that awesome special dividend at the beginning of the year. I got $40, I want to say, or close to that. But anyways, they're up 73.04% and they increase their dividend about 129 to 3.8% every year. Not, yeah, 129 to 13.8%. So this is another solid, this amazing dividend growth company to own. And then number five on this list is Merck, which is one of my newer dividend or one of my newer healthcare stocks. But I think I've still had them for at least a year and a half to two years. And they're up 54.25%. And they have solid dividend growth too. So I'm just going to scroll down slowly. You can look at my other stocks. FRT at one point was my top performing stock. I believe FRT was up a lot more than just 31.64%, but with the interest rates being high, and I also bought 
a ton of FRT stock when I sold my other REITs. So that might be why the gain is not as high as what it what it's been in the past. But FRT surprisingly has been one of my best performing stocks since I've owned it. And I've owned this about four and a half years, I want to say. But as you can see, my stocks are all performing really well. And I think that's a testament to the fact that I've held these stocks the longest. But as you can see, we've got SCHD only up 11.35%, which is still nice. I mean, SCHD has been really flat recently, but they're just starting to come up with the interest rates expected to lower. That should really help out SCHD. And then just going down, you can see my lowest performing stock, which is actually Hormel. And I mean, this one's really bad down 29.27 percent so that's why i was saying in the earlier earlier in the video if i had any stock that i might sell it could be hormel i really need to look into why they're performing so so horribly i mean i've had other stocks that have been worse than hormel like i used to own verizon and ooh, verizon was bad but i'm glad to get out of that high debt trap American Water Works, my second worst performing stock at a 0.59% gain. This stock was actually doing really bad too at one point, but it looks like they're starting to come around a little bit more. And what I like about American Water Works, it's a utility, it's essential, and they increase their dividend by 10% every year. So Avid Labs, they're my third worst performing stock at 0.62% gain. And this is my newest healthcare stock. I have owned them for quite a while, I think since the beginning of the year. So I don't have that much information or data on them. It's a stock that I'm not too sure about, but all in all, I'm going to keep them for now and just continue to monitor, monitor them. And then we have my fourth worst performing stock is Lowe's with a 6.67% gain, which honestly not too bad. And Lowe's usually increases their dividend by a ton. I think last year they increased it 32%. So that's something to think of. Lowe's is a very strong company. And then my fifth worst performing stock is actually Vici. And I'm up 7.37%. And honestly, Vici, I want to say, is my newest stock. So for it to be up, even 7.37%, which I've owned it for less than a year, that's a great return. And that doesn't even take into consideration the massive dividend they just paid me and that they'll continue to pay me and hopefully give an amazing dividend increase. But with that being said, guys, I want to thank you for watching this video where I reveal my $60,000 dividend growth portfolio, and I will see you guys in the next video.